Hello, I'm Craig Johnson, and when we're not in a pandemic, I get to work as a theater actor and a stage director all around the Twin Cities. But I'm also really interested in literature and in history, so I need to keep myself creative and active. So during the quarantine this spring, I created a series of short videos that are part literature, part performance, and part history. I call them literary lockdowns. Today, I just wander around my garden, as it looked in early April, and I talk about some of the struggles that women authors faced in the 19th century. And then I do a sweet little poem about spring called I Told You by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. It urges us not to be too downhearted when things seem bleak and scary, because just as the seasons change, this too will pass. Hi everybody, Craig Johnson here for another literary lockdown and going outside to take a look at things in the backyard. But you know, I was realizing that I hadn't done anything about any women writers yet, which is weird because in the 19th century, uh, there are so many great, great women writers who I just love. Um, and it was so interesting that in the 19th century, um, all of a sudden women started getting published and they also had a terrific audience as well too. So they were really selling as well. It was just a complete sea change from the centuries beforehand too, finally, right? Um, and of course they still had to deal with all kinds of crap, let's face it. Um, you know, you think about Jane Austen having to publish anonymously, all of the, you know, publication kind of contract deals that um, Louisa May Alcott had to go through, and you know, and that whole big chest of 1800 poems from Emily Dickinson that hadn't gotten published, so she was never able to get the uh, success that she deserved during her lifetime, too. And even behind all those great ones, there were so many other women writers here. Ooh, there are things coming up out of the garden here. Let's see if you can take a look right there. There you have a few. See, things are happening. There's a little more of the rest of the garden, too. Not much right now, but things are peeking up. Anyway, there are all these other women writers uh, behind those kind of like most famous ones. Uh, one that I really like is a, a poet and short story writer called Ella Wheeler Wilcox, who was really, really popular during her time period, but then really dismissed by later generations. She was born in Wisconsin, um, and one of my and she was published when she was even a, a teenager. So good for her, Ella. Um, she won some uh, big award, and she was, you know, going to go receive it at a governor's ball. And she was out east, and so she was coming back to Wisconsin, I think, to Madison. And so she got on the train, and while she was there uh, on the train, she saw this woman um, who was dressed all in black, clearly in mourning, and this woman was just um, sobbing. Uh, so Ella went over and comforted her and sat with her for a while. Wasn't that nice? Uh, and then left her and had to get off uh, finally, so left the woman. But then she said later she just couldn't shake this idea of this woman there. Um, and when she was looking in the mirror before going out to like get her award or appear at this big governor's ball or whatever it was, um, she looked in the mirror and the line came to her, laugh and the world laughs with you, weep and you weep alone, which became the opening line of her poem, Solitude, and probably the most famous uh, line that she ever wrote. She was unfortunately much derided by the, the next generation too, because she had this really regular meter and kind of obvious rhymes, was maybe a little sentimental and stuff like that too. Sinclair Lewis, Minnesota Sinclair Lewis, in his great novel Babbitt took a little bit of a swipe at her too. So she got a couple digs by the next generation. That always happens, doesn't it? Oh, speaking of digs, look at this. Can you, can you see that? This is where those rabbits have been biting into my lilac bush. Ooh, that makes me so mad. So, anyway, Ella Wheeler Wilcox, um, you know, even though she was kind of dismissed by later generations, too, I think she really um, had a lot to offer folks, too, at a time when poetry was really, really popular and published in magazines and stuff like that, um, newspapers, as well as books. 
and things. Here's um, one of her poems that I really like. It's called I Told You. So this is Ella Wheeler Wilcox right there, too. Ooh, that's not a very good angle right there, too. Um, it goes like this. I told you that winter would go, love. I told you that winter would go. That he'd flee in shame when the south wind came. And you smiled when I told you so. You said the blustering fellow would never yield to a breeze. That his cold, icy breath had frozen to death the flowers and birds and trees. And I told you the snow would melt love in the passionate glance of the sun. And the leaves on the trees and the flowers and bees would come back again one by one. That the great gray clouds would vanish and the sky turn tender and blue. <laughs> and the sweet birds would sing and talk of the spring. And love, it has all come true. I told you that sorrow would fade, love, and that you would forget half your pain, that the sweet bird of song would waken ere long and sing in your bosom again, that hope would creep out of the shadows and back to its nest in your heart, and gladness would come and find its old home, and that sorrow at length would depart. I told you that grief seldom killed love, though the heart might seem dead for a while. But the world is so bright and so full of warm light that would waken at length in its smile. Ah, love, was I not a true prophet? There's a sweet, happy smile on your face. Your sadness has flown Snowdrift is gone, and the buttercups bloom in its place. No buttercups. Here's a Canadian lilac, and the buds are just starting to come out. And here are the lilacs about six weeks later. <laughs>